I want to talk briefly about our mix of planned and spontaneous in worship. And Colossians 3.16 says, Let the message about Christ and all its riches fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And so we have three different types of songs there. We have psalms, which are pre-written in the Bible. We have hymns, which are pre-written songs. And then spiritual songs are spontaneous songs in the moment that we offer to God. And so Paul, in the early church, he's saying sing all three of those types of songs. Don't just sing pre-planned songs and be 100% structured and know exactly what's going to happen the whole time. But also, don't just be spontaneous, but actually put time into singing planned songs singing the Psalms from Scripture. In Psalm 22, it says that God is enthroned upon the praises of his people. And that word praise there, there's many different Hebrew words for praise in the Old Testament that we all just translate into praise, but they actually meant many different things in Hebrew. And that word in Psalm 22 is tehillah. And so it's the tehillah praise that God says in Psalm 22 that God is enthroned upon. That word tequila means the spontaneous overflow of our hearts to God, like in the moment where we just sing a new song to the Lord, spontaneous and in the moment. And so here we really value spontaneous and planned. We value plans because part of planning is bringing the Lord the best that we have. And planning allows us to be unified when we have pre-planned songs, when we spend time practicing and coming before God with songs that everybody knows, with songs that the band has practiced and comes together, then we're able to offer the Lord a unified offering that is together, is the best that we have to give. Thinking if the Lord is on earth and he's in a literal throne room and we come in and say, all right, we're going to bring the Lord offerings of thanks and praise through worship. We're not going to have no practice. We're going to come in and we're going to bring the Lord the best that we have and we're going to do it in unity all together. And so planned is so important. All throughout David's tabernacle in the Old Testament, it says that musicians were chosen because they were excellent. Singers were chosen because they were excellent. And so we want to offer the best that we have as a community to the Lord and we have structure and planning to offer the Lord the best of what we have to bring unity together. But our goal is not to be excellent. Our goal is not to sound the best. There can only be one highest goal. All of these can be second goals, but our highest goal is to minister to the Lord. And so when that's our highest goal, then we come in with thanksgiving. We come in with praise. We come in with our planned, and then we lay it all down as an offering to the Lord. And that's when spontaneous comes in. Of Our goal is to allow the, the Holy Spirit to be the leader. So sometimes we'll come in with three or four songs planned, and we may not make it to any of them because we just lay them down as an offering, and as soon as we get into worship, the Holy Spirit begins to highlight something to one of our leaders. And we say, all right, we're not going to do those songs, even though we, we spent time practicing those. We spent time planning them. Our goal is to lay them down as an offering and to come before the Lord and give them all to him. And so in our worship, a lot of times we'll leave space for instrumental time. And we do this because we believe that be to the Lord, instruments and voices sound the same because they both are expressions of the heart. Whether it's a guitar playing, whether it's drums playing, whether it's our voices, I think the Lord loves music and bands because it's it's all of us coming together in unity and in harmony together to bring him an offering. But really, when a guitar player is playing his guitar as an act of worship to God, I think it sounds just the same as a voice because it's an expression of our heart to him. And that's what the Lord is looking at. He's looking at our hearts. We also don't want to completely fill our worship time with our own voices. We want to leave time for the Lord to speak back to us and then us to respond to him. If we imagine corporate worship times are like date nights between the bridegroom and us as his bride, it would be awful if we came into a a date night with the Lord and we just talked the whole time and we didn't allow him to speak to us and we didn't allow conversation to happen. The last thing we want to do is to come in and to sing our own songs the entire time. Like we want to, we want to 
share what's on our heart. We want to bring him our thanks and our praise, and then we want him to speak to us, and then we want to respond to him, and we want it to be a dialogue back and forth. There's no perfect way, and we continually are learning and trying to grow in being students of the presence of God, learning how to respond to his presence rightly, learning how to host him, allow him to be the leader, and to love him in the way that that he wants to be loved. We don't always get it right. We debrief after our worship times. And there's times that we missed it, but we get to come before the Lord and to enjoy his presence. And we do that by mixing planned songs beforehand, by offering those as an offering, and then also incorporating spontaneous songs in the moment where we feel like the Holy Spirit has authored faith in our hearts to sing new songs back to him. So Colossians tells us to sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts.